Hey guys, welcome back to another Mech Spotlight. Today we're taking a look at a really exciting mech. This guy is a true beast. Uh, it's the King Crab Cane. This comes from the, uh, what was it, yet another campaign hero mod, something like that. Uh, this thing is insane. Uh, the quirks on it are really amazing. The build, the hard points, all of it. I love it. Um, it's obviously going to be a straight up brawler the way we built it here. Uh, real quick, I'll just show you the model so you can see all the hard points up there. You got missiles on your left, lasers on your right, and then of course the main cannons in each arm. Uh, this is just using the Black Inferno paint pattern. Uh, since this hero mech is actually uh, the mech from the leader of the Black Inferno Merc Company. Uh, so that's kind of why it's such a beast. But seriously, two Clan AC-20s, four improved heavy medium lasers, Clan, and four Clan SRM-6s. It's a ton of damage being put out. As you can see, alpha damage is 156, damage per second 37. Let's look at the quirks real quick, because that's really where this thing shines in conjunction conjunction with the hard points. Uh, so we get the King Crab uh, quirk, obviously. Uh, this gives you some structure armor bonuses, uh, repair cost, repair time, upkeep cost. Uh, then you get arms, so this is weapons on your arms only. Arms spread radius, arms heat generation, arms range. Some really nice bonuses there. Then we get the AC-20 platform quirk. This one gives you AC-20 projectile speed, AC-20 heat generation, uh, as well as range and ammo. So that's really nice to have if you're going to use AC-20s. As you can see, I took full advantage of that and used two of them. Uh, finally, we have the command mech, or not finally, but we also have a command mech, uh, sensor range bonus, 80 meters, and you get your 360 field of view. Uh, reinforced cockpit just adds a little bit of head armor and structure. Then you get your King Crab Hero Armor, obviously armor bonuses uh, for being a hero mech. And then we get to the Cane Quirk. So this is your hero quirk. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Predictive targeting is included. Turn speed modifier of 10%, decel modifier of 10%. You get a weapon lock on timer, minus 10%. Then you get to your, ace, your auto cannon uh, bonuses here. Now all of these are non rapid fire or rack auto cannon bonuses. So they do not apply to rapid fires and they don't apply to racks. Uh, but you do get, so all of these will apply to our AC twenties. You get projectile speed cooldown of 33%, one third off of your cooldown. Really nice to have that auto cannon heat generation also minus 30% and damage modifier minus 20%. So you are getting a reduction to your overall damage, but because you're getting an even bigger reduction to your cooldown, you're still going to pump out more DPS. Uh, then you also get a jam chance modifier. We're not taking advantage of that since we're not using anything that jams, uh, which is a little strange, honestly, because what else jams besides racks? And it does not affect racks, right? Weird. Uh, anyways, then you get auto cannon on ammo again, another 50% ammo on that laser SRM heat generation, laser and SRM range. Uh, so you do get a couple bonuses to lasers and SRMs there at the end. A lot of really nice bonuses here though, for the auto cannons. Uh, and then finally we have one more quirk on top of all this. It's the black inferno mercs quirk. Uh, this custom design is almost exclusively fielded by the Black Inferno Merc Company, though on rare occasions it may be seen within Comstar and Pirate Forces. Mechs of this Merc group have enhanced capabilities with most weapons designed to overheat mechs. They also have a high resistance to such weaponry, but the internals of these designs are noticeably more fragile. So, you get uh, increased armor repair time, uh, as well as structure repair time, mech upkeep cost modifier, then you get a heat capacity of plus five, really nice. Uh, incoming heat damage, minus 33%, also really nice. If you're playing with the revamped weapons and mod, uh, you noticed or you know that you get hit with a lot of heat damage weapons. Uh, there are more options for heat damage weapons within the revamped mod. Um, so that's really helpful here. And then you get AC rapid fire spread radius, rapid fire heat gen, 
we're not using rapid fires, so it doesn't matter there because that would be kind of counterproductive with the bonuses from the cane quirk, right? Uh, where was I? Uh, Flamer and Inferno SRM, optimal range and max range. Uh, we're not using any of those with this build, but if you did want to do Inferno SRMs instead of just Clan SRM6s, you could take advantage of that. And then Inferno LRM, heat generation and zero damage range modifier, uh, as well as Inferno LRM minimum range modifier. So, uh, oh, and there is also, oh, what is that bottom one? I have a uh, bottom of my screen block, so I can't quite see it, but you guys can, well, we'll just come in here real quick. Uh, incoming damage to structure, that's right, because you take additional damage to your internals uh, with this quirk. So. You are taking more damage to structure. Try not to let them get through you know, the enemies get through your armor, because uh, they'll tear you apart pretty quick if they break through your armor. Let's see. So that's all the quirks. As you can see, lots of nice bonuses for the auto cannons. Uh, so really, that's your primary weapon. But obviously, with four improved heavy medium lasers and four SRM sixes, you're uh, really well rounded here as far as your weaponry. Um, so let's talk about the weapons real quick. AC-20s. With the revamped mod, you get fires rapid burst uh, because these are clan. So the clan AC-20s are basically burst fire inner sphere 20s. Um, same thing. Fires a rapid burst with 20% more damage potential than single shot auto cannons. While this comes at the cost of lower accuracy, the higher damage along with the ability to swap to flak ammo allows burst ACs to excel against vehicles. Uh, the flak ammo, I'm not a huge fan of. If you read down below there, uh, extremely lethal against VTOLs, but much less effective against most other targets. So, unless you're specifically taking out a whole bunch of VTOLs, which might be a reason to carry like a half ton of flak ammo just uh, for those missions where that you might have a VTOL swarm. Um, but otherwise, flak rounds are, are not that useful against most other targets. Um, so, I really don't use it. I just stick with the standard ammo, uh, which works really well with this build. Uh, we'll talk more about the build overall in just a minute. The improved, these clan improved heavy medium lasers. These are pretty much the cream of the crop when it comes to medium lasers. Uh, they do pump out a lot of heat, so you are going to need to take care of that. Fortunately, we have some quirks to help us along the way with the heat management. Uh, so, like the heavy lasers that came before, the improved versions inflict twice the damage of a standard laser. Uh, so that's the same as normal heavy lasers, but without causing interference with the targeting systems as normal heavy lasers do. The main drawback is the fragile capacitors that are used to draw power as they will explode like a Gauss rifle when destroyed. And we got four of them all in the side torso here. So if you start losing those, you're probably going to lose your side torso. Um, like I said, don't let them break through your armor. Your structure is weaker. You have a lot of stuff here that can blow up. We have ammo in the other side torso. So you really want to pay attention to your armor fortunately you have a decent amount of it 623 uh armor which is typical for a uh, for a good king crab build um it makes it fairly sturdy um so uh, the other main drawback it doesn't say this here but the other main drawback with these is they are hot for medium lasers right and they take up a lot of space they're double crit slot i uh medium lasers which is not typical for medium lasers um but yeah pretty good weapon there uh it's really my first time using the improved heavy medium lasers uh i like them though they were pretty good uh excuse me just a second okay sorry about that um so yeah i like the improved heavy medium lasers though they feel very strong as they should for the amount of space and they take up and the heat they produce um so i like them the range is not the best so be aware of that your optimal range is only just over 400. Um, so they are shorter range. Same with the AC-20s. Obviously, AC-20 is a little bit longer optimal range. You're a little over 500 there. Um, and actually, the max range on these, I believe, is less than double the optimal range. Uh, it doesn't show the correct max range uh, in the info there. But yeah, it doesn't say it in, in the description either. Um, from playing with them, it, I think i remember the max range for these was around 600 so um i don't know pay attention to that in the gameplay if you're interested in the ranges uh then finally we have just some clan srm6s 
Uh, pretty standard stuff, short range missile system that fires guided missiles with a limited turning rate. It's recommended to aim more directly towards the target, but target locking is not required to fire. You can also use dead fire ammo with these. Uh, dead fire SRMs have significantly more spread, less range, and no lock on ability in exchange for more, much more damage. Uh, I did not use the dead fire ammo, but it might be something worth trying. Uh, requires either SRM dead fire ammo or dumb fire SRM ammo pirate. Um, yeah, I just went with standard ammo. I was fine with that, just like the AC-20s. Uh, speaking of ammo for the AC-20s, I went with three double bins of ammo, um, just so I had have enough for longer missions there. Uh, that may be a little overkill. I actually didn't pay attention to the ammo too much while I was playing the mech. I never ran out of ammo, so it's definitely enough. You could possibly drop this for a single bin, uh, and that'll free up a little space for some other stuff, maybe. Maybe another battle computer. Um, the double bin of SRM ammo definitely seemed like enough. Uh, the SRMs, because they have the shortest range out of all the weapons here, although these are all fairly short range weapons, uh, weapon systems, the SRMs get used the least out of all of these. Um, the AC-20s, your maximum range was basically a thousand meters. Um, so I was using those the most, obviously. I, the targets that are further away, or as I'm closing in on them, uh, I'm using those. Then as I get within range of the lasers, I start opening up with those. That'll start building up your heat a little bit more, so pay attention to your heat at that point. Uh, and then the SRM-6s are for finishing off a mech once you get uh, within basically the 500 meters uh, is when I was using those. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the internals here. Uh, engine core, we went 325. You want to have some speed here. Unfortunately, that was about as much. I started off with a 350 engine, um, but it, the build just didn't work with it. I I got it to work, but it didn't feel good. I didn't like, uh, I didn't even play with it. Just looking at it, I could tell it wasn't going to be good enough. Um, so I ended up dropping that to the 325 core with a Clan XL. Uh, that allows us to have three double heat sinks in the engine, which is really nice for this build because heat is a little bit of a problem on this build if you're not careful. Um, we definitely needed every double heat sink we fit on this build. Uh, then we have a, a ultralight stabilized gyro. Uh, this was just to free up a little more weight. The Royal double heat sink kit, obviously that's pretty standard. It's the best double heat sink kit you can get. Uh, and then in the cockpit, uh, I did put an exchanger mark two on the head. That's pretty standard for any build where you need heat management, right? That's the best exchanger there is. Uh, also the heaviest, but well worth it in my opinion. Uh, and then the battle computer heat is right there. Uh, I have sniper sensors, modular FCS, obviously with the battle computers around here. And then a small advanced cockpit because I needed some more space, uh, crit slots and the weight. So... I originally had the slick suite in there, decided to go with this instead, just to make the whole build work. Um, I originally also tried to fit an AMS on here, a laser AMS, but I ended up removing that for battle, for another battle computer because I ran out of crit slots for the battle computers. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, just one second. Okay. Um, so yeah, for the battle computers, uh, on the topic of battle computers, uh, Let's see, we have Battle Computer Ballistic. That's basically a must have with this build because you are focused on the AC-20s mostly. I, the mech does have the quirk that has built in predictive targeting, but I wanted the additional ballistic uh, and missile bonuses from this. Uh, so I threw on the Battle Computer Predictive and Battle Computer Energy here as well, just to get some more bonuses on our lasers since they are really our secondary weapon system. Um, Let's see, I, I think that was it for the battle computers, right? Yeah, that was it, just the, the heat as well, uh, obviously to help out with our heat management. Uh, I did throw a probe and an ECM on there, both clan. Um, pretty standard stuff. If I can fit both on a mech, I pretty much always do. Uh, feel free to drop one or the other if you don't need them. Uh, as far as additional cooling, we have our thermal transfer ducts on each leg and cooling jackets on each arm. Uh, it does a lot. Uh, you know, they don't really add weight. The, the cooling jackets do reduce your arm twist angle and rate. Uh, king crabs, I mean, I didn't notice it. King crabs always have slow arms and whatever anyways with most builds. Um, I really didn't notice that big of a hit to it. So I thought it was fine. I like, it, it 
you definitely need something to help with the cooling that isn't going to take up more crit slots. Uh, so those are nice to use. Same thing with the thermal transfer ducts. Uh, not really a problem that we're losing more structure there because we're not letting them break through our armor anyways, and it's just the legs. Um, so we really don't get hit in the legs that much. That is the only place where I drop some armor besides the head. All the rest, uh, the, the torsos and the arms are maxed out on the armor. Uh, so in the very end, I added, I had one crit slot left, um, but I didn't have any weight tonnage left. So I just threw on a patchwork and added a little bit more armor to the legs. Uh, overall, the build is, is just, it works. It's a freaking beast of a build. Uh, you can go in brawling, uh, do watch your armor, like I was saying, but you're going to be taking mechs out within seconds. Uh, I mean, your alpha damage, if you're close enough to use all three weapon systems, your alpha is over 150 damage. So, you know, that's breaking through the armor on, on this mech immediately. And what is that? Like half of the structure. Um, so that would just leave a little bit of structure left. One of your lance mates or, you know, you follow up. The AC-20s on this build fire really quickly um, with that, that cooldown reduction that you're getting from the cane quirk. I mean, you you can actually do a whole alpha and then just within a couple seconds, what is it? Cooldown, two and a half seconds. You're firing another shot of your AC-20s to finish off whatever it is that you shot with your alpha. Uh, so really, really nice uh, fire speed on the AC-20s. These things are powerful with this build. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. And it is fun to play. I mean, you feel the power. You're destroying assault mechs within a couple shots. Uh, really nice stuff. I think I, that pretty much is everything you need to know about the build. Uh, it's a straight up king crab brawler. Get in there, unload, take them out, watch your armor, watch your heat. If you're in a hotter biome, if you're in a cold biome, it really never becomes a problem. Um, the speed is the only thing where I wish I had a little more speed. It'd be nice to be closer to 60 kph. Unfortunately, it just didn't really work out with this build. So anyways, guys. That's the build. I had a ton of fun with it. Let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, enjoy the gameplay. And until next time, have a good one.
Heads up, Commander. Weather conditions in the area will restrict visibility.